Hey guys, this is Magenta. I always say that here, but yeah, it's Magenta. How are you? I am chilling on this sofa with Gohan. Hello. Am I saying your name right, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we begin the interview, actually, Gohan's a very unique name, very avant-garde, outside the box. So I'd like to like explain where you got that name from. Oh, wow. It started, yeah, a cartoon called Dragon Ball Z. I knew it! Can I show you the move that I had ready? <laughs> I was going to stand up, but I'm going to stay here because I'm cold. It, it was like, Gohan! And I'm really being serious because I used to be a Dragon Ball Z fan. You see? Yeah, yeah he's true. He's oh, true. hit me! Okay. <laughs> I'm really excited because I had a feeling. Sorry, yeah. carry on. Yeah, and because uh, like everyone was saying, I look Chinese anyway, so I, everyone used to take the piss out of me. And then they said, boom, Gohan, because I looked like that character at the time with the hair and everything. So it's just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then from that, it just become Gohan. That's unique anyway. Yeah. Right, new. Yeah, you know. I'm so making yeah, sure that is, I gotta get <laughs> off this now. Because <laughs> we're looking back like, oh. Anyway, um, it's wicked to have you here today. Um, obviously, you are a wicked artist. Um, Thanks, before we even go into that, how did you get into music? Oh, started time ago. Started with drum and bass first. It's a way that they had man like bass man or like trigger. All these man was coming out, spider and like. I thought, what are they doing? You know, like, I, can, I can do this. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd start rapping on my own, then I'd just give it up. Then it, through school, grime come out, and then everyone's on this grime, everyone's rapping. So I thought, you know what, I can do it. And then just started doing it. And then that was it from then. But then I give up. I give up with it, because like, I, I thought it would do one of marketing it for okay. me. Then I jumped back onto the rapping, because I've always loved rapping. So it was mad, it was mad, mad ride like, but I held on kept through and then this year well last year it's a big year for me a lot of things was happening cool. so like now this year i think it's time to next step take it to yeah, the man. take it to the next step well if you didn't keep going you'll be sitting in the oxygen room with magenta <laughs> so what can i say good things come sure. um i watched a video of yours um game of death yeah, yeah. That is a unique video. Again, I'm going to use the word avant-garde. Outside the box, guys. Like, literally, I did like that video. What inspired you to do a video with such uniqueness to it? Why? Uh, it was the instrumental first. Yeah. A, lot of peop a lot of people wouldn't even know the instrumental. It was an old Wu-Tang instrumental, Killer Bees. There. And, like, the, it, was the, uh, it was called Your Bastards, the Tumors. And I if you know me, yeah, you know that's what, that's like the... The, how can I say? That's what we all say. Yeah, you okay. bastards. Like Everyone slogan knows. Kind of it's thing. like a slogan type of thing, yeah. And then when I heard that, I thought, boom, I love this track. Like a lot of people probably ain't even heard the beat before, mm -hmm. so they think it's my beat, but it, it's, it's it's from the Wu Tang and like the what the Wu Tang like pr movement that they did was all the kung fu films, all choreographer yes. and mad, and I loved it. I loved it. It's like inspired me a lot. So like with that video, I just really wanted to do the same thing like and um, he come out with that shout out to Vivi Kingdom as well, Chromosome. That they, they done the video. It was all him. It was Brilliant all, all them like yeah. Brilliant video. I actually liked the bit as well. I was like, that sounds like an old school stuff. Come put my finger on it, but I liked it. I think we need to bring it back again. So it's nice that you're bringing that yeah, back round. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I love that rap. Do you know what I mean? It's got an authenticity to it. Yeah. Um in that song there's Seva. Can yeah. I say hello to Seva? Hi Seva, I'm coming Shout for you. Out to Seva. <laughs> I'm coming to interview you, all right mate. Um, yeah, but it's a brilliant track. So what have you done so far that's been significant would you say has been significant within your time in music up to today? Well, uh, well let me see. Well for last year I dropped my first mixtape. That was to me that was a big stepping stone for me because mm -hmm. if your first mixtape shit you got they're gonna let you know. They're gonna let you know, the fans will. And cause my first one like uh, it was to the best of my abilities at that time, and everyone loved it. And Ed, I got so many fans off just that mixtape. I had to come with the next one, That's cool. and then when I come with the next one, was bringing back the days, mm -hmm. which is like bringing back the hip hop days yes. when hip hop was hip hop. And pff, that that there is like a masterpiece. That mixtape, it's, it's mad. It's madness. That many flavors in it from different. I had grime artists rapping, like changing out the yeah. box. So it's mad. The whole. The whole thing. Like, How long ago was this? That I dropped that on the uh, 21st of December. That's uh, last year, and this year I'm looking on another mixtape, same mid-year. Okay. So I'm just keep writing. Definitely want a copy. Writing.
for free. Yeah, you can have one. I download free downloads. So yeah. Yeah, you can get it. Can be with my freebies today. <laughs> um, also, um, so you've been doing music for a long time. I'm sure you've worked with obviously Seva, yeah. um, and there's a few other artists. Would you like to explain for the artists that you've worked with and your experiences on the way? Yeah, well, uh, um, another tune that I done was uh, called Roll Bitch that featured Stardom and Young Peps. They're big in the Birmingham scene right about now. Cool. Like, they're doing good for Birmingham rap. The movement's good, like, so that was a good tune. That I, lo I love that tune there. Mm -hmm. Then I worked with a lad called Gex. Yeah, not many people might know about him in the rap world, but in the grime, he's up there, like, okay. he's new up and comer. So I, lo I love that geezer's flow straight away. And then when I've heard him rap, I was like, fuck, what you been doing, man? Mm -hmm. This is what you should be doing. Yeah. And then we've done a tune called The Iraq Story. And like, it basically, it's a story about a pal who passed away of mine, okay. who got sent to her, he was a soldier, got killed. And like, I just thought, it's, it's a big topic to touch base on. So when I've done that, like, the, the feedback that I've got was crazy. It was just crazy. So like, it's madness. There's a, who else I work with? Uh, so plus Jay Don, Little Jeezy, ESA, they're all a part of my camp anyway, cool. DP Legacies that is. So and I just want I'm trying to get more, you know, more features. That's what I, I need more. So what do you think about the music in Brum? No, yeah. what do you think about the music in Brum and in the UK? That's two questions for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. In Brum it's popping off right about now. It, like, last year was good to even with like through socks getting signed and, mm. and like he opened up the Birmingham, Birmingham market. Now everyone's looking, oh, who's the next Birmingham rapper to come out and who's this? Oh, I haven't heard them before and it's opening a lot of eyes. Like so, like for the Birmingham scene, it's banging right about now. About time. Yeah, about time. Let me tell. <laughs> Too many years we've been waiting. Seriously. And like now, and for the UK, fuck why? Let me tell you, the rap, UK rap, right about now. Even man from America, Canada. Germany, they're looking at the UK artists mm. because, it, like you say, when rap started in America, it was about the time, like the time everyone was the poverty driven, so they, they wanted to make music for the for the youths. Yeah. Like now, I think it's come back to that stage, but with the UK artists, yeah. no one's trying to be American no more. No one's rapping like Americans. No. They're, they're keeping it British and, Good. and it's working. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's yeah. working. It's being true to your own craft, but you know. Yeah. We don't live in Brooklyn. We live yeah, in so, Brooklyn. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. A lot of rappers idolise the American rappers, so yeah. they're, obviously they're going to be influenced and rap happen. like them. Like, yeah. I ain't going to lie, it happened to me at the beginning. Mm. Like, a lot of people mm. think it's American. So I, I it, like, knocked me for a big so I thought, hold on, I'm good. What do you mean? Yeah. And like, constructive criticism, but then, like you say, Skinny Man, another MC from England, like, when I heard his stuff, blew me away. I was thinking, he's kept the British action, British swagger, just everything councillor, rapping about the council estates and all that just like opened my eyes and I thought, you know what, we can do this. I love, I love it man, I love it. Okay, so, Gohan, if you wasn't sitting on this sofa today, on this cold day with me and not doing music, where do you think you'd be as an alternative career? If it weren't music. If it weren't music, would uh, I don't know, because I'm a good artist as well, I love drawing, but I've, I've, so, uh, I've probably been an artist somewhat, somewhat like still that. Still creative, still but, expression. But I've just jumped into this film, yeah, it's called The Quiet One, okay. directed by John Pegg, Birmingham based film, and uh, I've never acted before in my life, and he saw one of my videos and said, casted me and says, you're perfect for the part, and when I've gone there, I was a natural, well, you could say I was a natural, but I was just doing what I'd normally do, just yeah. acting normal, and it worked. Well, they couldn't even believe that this was the first film I was in, and like, you. it's got some good actors in it as well. Like, you're going to hear a lot about that mid-year, it's, it's coming out. Good so for you. What's, the, what's the name of the film it's again? The Quiet One, that is. The Quiet the, One. Yeah, directed by John Pegg. Right. And Louis Morel as well, I can't forget about him. Keep yeah. your ears and eyes open for that one, man, definitely. Mm -hmm. Alright then, so... You've done a lot of things, and obviously you're a respected artist, you know what I mean, and you know your stuff very well. What would you say to young people out there that want to write, that want to be respected, that want to, you know, be established yeah. there, you know, for their music? Say, just do it, just, just keep doing it. Don't let people unknock your confidence. Even when I started, I was rubbish. My, my lyrics, mediocre, average. And I knew that, but still, if I stopped then, because someone told me I was shit, I wouldn't be where I am now. You wouldn't be as good as you I'll are be, now? I wouldn't be here now, so, like, basically, keep doing it. If you, if you like writing, yeah, 
write lyrics every day, even if they don't make sense, write it down. And you can always come back to it later, take a little bit out. Just keep writing, write and practice on your flow. Your flow is the main part of it. Because a lot of rappers, they'll, they've got good contents, but the flow's not there. So like, people won't listen to them, they'll just go, yeah, you're all right. And just let, let, when you mastered your flow, master the, keep writing, write every day, and then boom, it's, 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 it's easy when you think about it. It's hard at first, but like a couple of years practice. But it's finding who you are, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, it's so finding you as an artist, artist yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like doing the painting, you know, yeah. you know you've got to find yourself. Yeah, yeah. So again, positive. I'm loving this positive art syndrome. I, I am loving the positive art syndrome, giving the young people positive talk. I do like it, and I'm, I am a positive, yeah, myself. Um, before I leave, what are you doing at the moment? Any up and coming events, singles? Oh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Shout out to MC Biggie. He's uh, managed me at the moment, okay. right? And he's uh, he's got me a few gigs here and there. But he's got his birthday bash is on the seventeenth of February. But it's my birthday as well, so it's uh, MC Biggie slash Gohan. How are you gonna be Gohan? Uh, I'll, I'll no. tell you about that. We'll tell you about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but basically it's gonna be it's gonna be a banger. That's at the Rainbow Warehouse on the 17th February. It's free entry until 11, and then okay. it's a fiver on the door, so it's minor really. A fiver on the door, if you're getting yeah, after you 11, come and support, do you know yeah, what I mean? Getting there free if you want to get in there. Get like, there before yeah. 5 to 11, guys, right? <laughs> Get there. All right, then. It's been brilliant sitting here and talking to you. Again, your video blew me away. And I've got to go back to it. It was unique, and I've got to give you that. Um, let me shake your hand. It's a pleasure to meet you, thank and you. I'll be listening to a lot more music. Yeah, thank you. Look out for this guy, another brilliant Birmingham artist. Take care, man. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs>